Just enjoying a mild February day along with the Senate President Craig Blair also joining us via telephone from the Capitol. Craig, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Our pleasure, sir. Let's get right into it and talk first and foremost about the Senate's version of a tax cut. This covers about $600 million. And to the happiness of many, including my CPA, Ken Apple, it addresses the marriage penalty. Talk to me about this bill, Craig. Okay, first of all, uh, you know, it's we tried to crunch the numbers to do what the House and the governor wanted to do over and over and over and over. And we kept coming back with the same numbers that we had when we were dealing with the constitutional amendment for the personal property tax. And that is, is that we had basically $600 million that we could work with. And so then uh, once we finally come to the conclusion that, you know, what the House had passed over to us was unworkable, uh, that uh, we were going to, to have to redraw what was going on. So we said start with the uh, understanding that you got truly 600 million and then the governor wanted the 10 percent personal income tax back in august of last year but we didn't do that because the um, amendment was on the ballot and you couldn't afford to do both well that's not on the ballot any longer so we said let's do 15 percent of 10 percent is $250 $250 million, so 15% is 375 so you subtract that off of the $600 million. Now, the governor also introduced a bill and said during Amendment 2 that he wanted to do a 100% rebate on the personal property tax on automobiles, so we included that. That the personal property tax on automobiles would be about one hundred and forty million dollars, uh, but not everybody's going to take advantage of that and, and go through the paperwork of on doing that. So in reality, it's going to be closer to a hundred million dollars. Of that, you add that on to the top of what I just talked about, and you have to forgive me; I've lost track of my. The, the numbers three seventy five a hundred that's four hundred and seventy five million so that leaves us a hundred and twenty five million and so the marriage penalty we believe that that's about a thirty million dollar one and for your listeners, I think a, a lot of us understand that whenever you file the federal income taxes and you know you've had it taken off your your paycheck uh, week after week during the year, and then you get a refund of when you do your federal income tax, but when you go to pay your state income taxes, if you're married, you actually have to write them a check. And it's my understanding, uh, this before I got here, this was designed for unwed mothers, single moms, and everything, to be able to put a little extra money back in their pocket. But I think the end result of this has been more single moms. Of in, uh, to, You know, to, they say that you tax stuff uh, to deter behaviors of in government. Well, I don't know whether that's actually the truth or not, but let's just say it is in this instance. Or so are we deterring the family unit, the marriage, through our tax system? That's got to stop. Better yet, we ought to be taxing everybody equally. And, and so the, eliminating the marriage amendment, or a marriage penalty, excuse me, will go a long ways. We also addressed uh, homestead of real property tax rebate for any disservice excuse me, 90 to 100 percent service disabled military veterans. Uh, there's about 6,000 in the state of West Virginia, and that doesn't have a big price tag on it either. So I'm not even going to put that into the calculation of, on this. But So I've got about $100 million left, 110, I think it is. Of, and so we did a 50 percent rebate on equipment, machinery, and inventory on the personal property tax. Now, it doesn't have any triggers. Let me just jump back again to the personal income tax reduction of 15%. If sales tax revenues exceed 105% of the previous year, there'll be a dollar-for-dollar reduction. So let's say that you had an additional $250 $250 million in sales tax over the previous year, that would trigger another 10% reduction in the personal income tax and make it a 25% reduction. On the 50% rebate on the 
personal property tax, there are no triggers. It will be 50% for those, and that helps us uh, with economic development and keeps jobs here, and it fits right into that price range of the $600 million. So we believe that we're going to hit on target of on being able to do what we want to do, and then uh, – there's another argument that's been made. You know, I've heard people that are in favor of the personal income tax say, well, the voters voted it down because they said they didn't want that. Well, actually, a lot of the voters voted it down because they thought we were doing a great job on managing our excess revenues and putting it into the infrastructure needs and creating jobs for the people of West Virginia. And I got, I've got received a lot of emails to that effect. So what we did was, is what I, as I just explained this to you, we threaded the needle. We made it so that a personal income tax doesn't affect uh, the vast majority of our seniors because anything up to $100,000 wasn't taxed anyhow. Our working poor, to a greater degree, was not uh, is not taxed as well. This makes it so that all West Virginians are included in on that. Oh, I forgot one last thing. Then, uh, then I'll let you ask questions on this. That fifty percent rebate on the personal property tax on equipment, machinery, and inventory uh, does not apply to the corporate net. You can't rebate back. So if you're a C-Corp, you're an out-of-state company that's doing business in the state of West Virginia, it just doesn't apply to you. But if you're a small business owner, LLC, of uh, a C-Corp, of or whatever other versions of small businesses there are right there, where you actually pay tax on your profits through your personal income tax, you do get it. So it helps those small businesses that create a lot of jobs in the state of West Virginia, because that was one of the concerns that we'd heard out there, too, that we were giving tax breaks to the big business outside of the state of West Virginia. Well, we heard you. And we tried to, to, again, thread the needle and do it in such a way that it made it so that uh, everybody could end up uh, being a winner on this. So there you go. Craig, you've previously spoken about wanting to do tax cuts that make a big splash and an economic impact that spurs growth. Will this $600 million tax cut that covers various categories of taxes make that desired splash? It won't make uh, the splash that we were hoping for, but can it help? Yes. And, and again, you know, no splash at all is probably a bigger problem of than anything. Uh, we, we're wanting to, to, to our uh, our marginal rate, I believe, of what it is on income tax will make us very very competitive with our surrounding states. When I say that, I mean we're going to be below some of them. Uh, does it get us the whole way? No. But the triggering mechanism in doing this will. The, one of the things that we don't want to do is to inflict upon future legislatures or governors uh, where they have to come back in and say, we're short $500 million, we're short $750 million. And that was a real possibility by the plan that was passed over by the House delegates. And we don't want to do that. that uh, it's a measure control understanding of the economics spend and to, so but we've all it, it, i've said this over and over isn't it wonderful that we've managed our government so well that we're we're having the discussion and the argument whatever you want to call it about tax reduction who would have dreamed that 10 years ago joe ferretti good morning craig and thank you for taking the time out of what i'm sure is another busy day for you to talk with us uh, i wanted to try to drill down a little bit more on your proposal that came out of the Senate in terms of who, uh, who or what qualifies as a small business. Uh, you, you mentioned C-Corps, and I think you were, you're trying to define what we typically call a pass-through uh, business, where, yeah. as you said, the profits are, are taxed uh, by the individual business owners. Is there any other parameters here that are set uh, or anticipated in your legislation to define small businesses? as to who's going to qualify for these uh, uh, tax breaks on equipment, machinery, and inventory? 
There is currently not, but we're not averse to refining the bill uh, in such a way that makes it so that it does the intent. Okay, it's, uh, that's the simplest way to put it. I know there's some discussion already about how to, you know, tune it in and make it so that it's like that. And if that's the case, the Senate's going to be okay with it. Well, okay, your your plan, and I don't know if this is fair or not, but your plan came out uh, on Wednesday. Uh, I think 1030, you were in front of the microphones uh, announcing it on behalf of the Senate. Uh, in the last two days, has there been feedback from House members, various trade organizations, business groups? Uh, what, what are you hearing so far regarding the reception your plan is receiving? Positive, positive, positive across the board. Uh, Nine thirty yesterday, I was in, uh, met with the governor and uh, the House of Delegates and the leadership, and everything's been very good. Of course, uh, there's going to be people that want to make adjustments to it and all that. And, and again, we're, we're going to be okay with it as long as you don't make adjustments that's going to drive the price up to seven hundred million, eight hundred million, or a billion dollars. Uh, we, we, we'll say no to that. Uh, I, I'm I've, I already know where the caucus is at on doing that. We want we want to do what we can afford. We want to be a team player. We want to give back to the people of West Virginia. Uh, they deserve this, and we think that we've given a broad cross section of of West Virginia to be able to do this instead of a narrow one. You could have argued uh, that. Uh, the personal income tax bill that was sent over to us uh, to benefited the uh, wealthiest people in the state of West Virginia. And that's not what that intent was. Of, and we, we believe that we've corrected it in such a way that it makes it so it works for everybody. Okay, Craig, lastly, and I'm, I'm, I'm listening carefully to what you're saying here, uh, so I'm going to ask the question, is the $600 million figure that your plan is based on as far as tax cuts for the state of West Virginia. Is that a line in the sand as you now head forward towards negotiations with the House? Uh, it's a line in the sand. I'm, I have a, it's, it'll be loose enough to accommodate good ideas, though. Okay, uh, so if it comes out to being six hundred thirty million, or five hundred and seventy million, or something like that, of uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm not going to, to, to. The Senate will not have a fight uh, over a number that is close. Okay, uh, that, that that's not the point of it. The point is, is that what we. We wanted to do, the, if the personal property tax would have passed, it would have cost $600 million the way we were going to do it. The true number was about 450 but that's but that wasn't what we were calculating. The governor's 10% was $250 million, and at the time, we couldn't do both. If the voters would have passed it, we couldn't do both. So that you can see where I'm telling you, if you are getting up into the six hundred and seventy million, eighty million, or higher, we can't do that. Uh, it will create a problem in the future, and or it creates the possibility. And the higher that number goes, the more likely that that will happen. David Valente. Uh, good morning, Craig. Uh, so uh, one of the things I would uh, want to know is that uh, in one of the uh, few complaints I heard about uh, the bill coming out was the, the fact that it was introduced on Wednesday and passed very quickly with dispensing with the three readings. Why skip the three readings, uh, uh, rushing to, to get this out of the Senate? Um, I know that there's a finite amount of time in the in the legislative session, but... Why? Why the? Why the rush? You see the vote on it also. Tell them. I did. I, yeah, tell, I saw the. Saw tell the vote. listeners that. Yeah, the, I saw the vote on it. <laughs> it. That, that's fine. But there's, you know, as many times as I hear the re Republicans talk about, uh, complain about Democrats uh, nationally doing something like having a bill and saying we got to pass it to figure out what's in it. You're not allowing the. the this, it's the same thing. You're not allowing the membership to to read the bill before they're passing it. No, 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 no. You misunderstood it. The minority of, and the decision was made in the caucus. Let me give you a little outline on how this came about being. And that is, is that of, we were moving through, and we, 
uh, we had Ross Sobel in who uh, wrote Unleashing Capitalism, and it's been a greater degree the roadmap to our prosperity as, as the Republicans have taken over. And uh, we were moving on to day 28, 29, and we understand that we do need to give enough time for the House delegates and that and also be able to do the budget. There was cons- a lot of work that took place. Of, and when you got a 31 of your 34 members of, and the way I run business is, is we have caucuses every morning, and we, we went in and hammered out on what our number was that we were going to spend. Then we hammered out on how we were going to go about spending it. And then we let the minority know. We let the uh, speaker know. We let the governor know. And then we did a press conference. The state chamber was there with us. People knew what was in the bill. We had a press release ready to go so that people knew what was in the bill. And uh, we put it out there and had the floor discuss about it so it's like committee as a whole at that point in time and then we uh, we t- manage business okay and there is no there was no reason to drag something out in three days uh, and then let the lies set in on what is happening or not happening and that happens a lot in this place when Let's use the Center for Budget and Policy, because I don't think they're too thrilled about it, because they'd rather see every penny spent of the tax dollars on their social programs uh, and and all that. And it's like, this nonsense. We're not going to fight the misinformation. And uh, again, we offered up a great product that is getting great reviews of out here, and, and we're still saying that you can show something to improve upon it, we're willing to work with you. All right. Follow up, David? Yeah, and um, talk about what conversations have you had with the House so far on this bill? What, how? Talk about the you know, what they're saying about the prospects of, of you know, I know that there's going to be uh, debate and amendments and things like that. What are they, uh, are they okay with the structure of the bill or are, are we going to see something vastly different come back from the House? Uh, I believe that we're going to see uh, just some fine tuning of our bill, but I don't know that. I can't speak for the House. You got the wrong person on the call uh, to be asking those questions to. You got a promo with Chairman Householder. Get him on the show and talk to him and and, and see what's going on with that. I have conversations, uh, but it's improper for me to be talking about this because the next thing you know uh, then my words are taken out of context and then uh, the hard work that we've all put forward whether it's the House, the Governor, or the Senate becomes unraveled. I'm not going there. I gave you the best answer I could give you. We had uh, Leader Householder on the day after this uh, plan was released, Craig, and he sounded like he had some concerns about about Amendment 2 being revisited inside this tax plan in regards to personal property tax rebates. Uh, Again, uh, I I can't remember exactly. It passed in Berkeley County. So uh, he says the the people have spoken. Again, uh, a a lot of them voted yes. And their personal income tax plan did nothing uh, for the people that voted yes. The, the, The people that voted no... Uh, maybe did want the personal income tax. But, there, I, again, I've already explained this. There's a lot of people that voted no that didn't want any tax reductions. They felt like that we were doing a good job of rebuilding our infrastructures and getting the jobs to the state of West Virginia. And that all takes resources as well. And so this bill does all those things. It, get, it takes care of the people that wanted a personal income tax reduction, and it exceeds the 10% the governor wanted to do. Do you okay? do you feel safe with this number, considering what Senator Tarr, the Senate Finance Chairman, projected out as the future obligations of the state going into the late 2020s? Yes, yes. As long as you stay in the $600 million window, I, feel, I, I wouldn't have voted for it. Okay, and remember, I'm a former finance chairman, uh, also, 
and I, if I have an interest down here, it's on how to handle the monies. And uh, that, I feel, I feel very safe on that. Joe Ferretti. Craig, uh, a couple other subjects we wanted to touch on very briefly before uh, the end of this segment. Uh, the form energy uh, situation is still, I believe, in the House, and they're preparing to vote out what could be a $290 million investment in that uh, uh, venture that's anticipated for the old Weirton Steel location up in the northern panhandle. Any sense on how the Senate's going to look at that situation? Uh, yes, I've, I've got uh, a few members. If you're in the coal area, of of the state of they don't look at it as fondly as other areas of the state okay uh but, but here's what is probably going to happen now and my members of the senate i'm very proud of them for that matter uh they don't I, they they have their concerns for their regions or their areas and all but they look at what's good for the state we understand of that when it comes to the green energy, the solar, the wind, the batteries, whatever you want to talk about when it comes to that. We also recognize that the companies like Procter & Gamble, Clorox, Nucor, uh, they look for that sustainable energy because their stockholders demand it. But we also understand that when those businesses come here, the electricity they burn can still be coal-fired power plants. And so we want to be an all-the-above energy state. We've always been an energy state. We want to continue to grow in the new economy, whether it's with the fossil fuels or whether, which is a great base load. Okay, it, in California they have blackouts, brownouts. Try running a business in that environment. In West Virginia, we want to do all of the above, and, and so Form Energy fits into that portfolio of being able to do it. And uh, I, I, and to be honest with you, at first I had some reservations about it myself personally. Uh, but when you get down into the details of uh, on what's going on, what that. Uh, and, and, and all, everything has risk to it. Remember Swear Engine when they never built an oh, airplane yeah. and everybody was hyped right. up about that? Well, I never forget that. Uh, and these are <laughs> tax dollars that we want to make sure that propel us into the future. Uh, but Form Energy uh, may it, uh, very well have to attract another 10 to 20 billion dollars of investment into the state of West Virginia. You heard me right. That's like five to 10 more new cores. And so you have to look at the broad picture of on what's going on rather than sound bites and, and people that are philosophically uh, opposed to just about everything. Craig, I know you needed to be out around 8.30. Do you have time for another question, or are you out? Yeah, I, I've got time enough. Joe, did you have another question on yeah, that? I, I did. I did, Rob. Thanks. Uh, Craig, real quick, because we have seconds left. Um, last Friday, there was a committee meeting in finance to uh, discuss the governor's gift to Marshall University uh, with the repurposed CARES Act money. I'm just curious, in the eyes of the Senate president here, is that a serious inquiry? Oh, yeah, very much so. And and the, the, it's going to sound like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. Uh, but I'm going to answer the question the best I can. Uh, the, the governor's office, and I've said this on this show before, has done uh, a fairly a very good job of these federal dollars coming in, putting them in places that actually have return on our investment into the future and then the infrastructure and all that. And then, but you've had other opportunities, especially since that you've moved into the uh, mode that I'm thinking about running for U.S. Senate, that... There, there, it's how the money's been moved around the counts. There's questions. And that's the reason why you have the three branches of government, the checks and balances of on what was going on uh, to, on the monies. We want to make sure that uh, – and we're an open book uh, on the Senate side. We tried to make it so 
that you can see what's going on for to dispense and all that. I say try, we do. Uh, but the, the, there was how do you use water and sewer money to build a ball field at Marshall? And by the way, Brad Smith's doing a great job over at Marshall, and he's helping to recruit business into the state of West Virginia. Corporate America knows West Virginia's on the map now, and Brad Smith is a key component of that. Did I answer the question? Yeah, you sure did, Craig. Thank you. And by the way, Craig, when you said I'm thinking of running for U.S. Senate, you meant Senator Ju- uh, Governor Justice, not Craig Blair, correct? Yes, <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs> well, I thought we were breaking news. But, but I, do, I, do have a, I do have a recorded quote of you saying I'm thinking of running for U.S. Senate, though. And, and see, this is exactly the point that I make. <laughs> so, and, and, and great, if the governor wants to run for U.S. Senate, fine. Uh, but, you know, uh, let's do the, the work at hand. And, 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 again, I know the governor's got, got a good heart. We've been at, been at odds on this, uh, the, on, on what's going on. But it's the process. Okay, this is what takes place. And I believe that when this is over and done, what the Senate has heard, uh, the people of West Virginia, the Senate has heard the executive, the Senate has heard the House of Delegates, and we believe we crafted something that is a win, 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 win scenario for everybody in the state of West Virginia. And, and I'm proud of that. And to a greater degree, uh, the, the Senate was the architect of that. Um, and I'll leave it go at that. Greg, thank you for your time this morning. Very much appreciated. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good yeah, day. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day.